Welcome to the Town of Auburn Planning Board meeting Tuesday, November 12, 2024. Now call to order at 7 p.m. This meeting is being recorded and broadcast live by local access programs. Is there anyone here in the audience tonight recording tonight's meeting? Being none, please rise and join us in the salute. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, I'd like to remind the audience, applicants, town administration, these are planning board members, to please refrain from asking questions in regards to all matters discussed this evening without first being granted my consent. Person on our agenda tonight is applicant Mass Futures LLC requesting site plan approval under section 3.2.2.1 of the Auburn Zoning Bylaw. 21 two family dwelling condo developments at 25 Vinyl Street, Auburn, Mass, 0151, Map 10, Parcel 78. Is there anyone here representing uh, Mass Futures? Yes. I Mr. Chairman. Uh, Attorney Todd Broder here on behalf of the applicant. Sitting next to me is Garrett Horsall, the one here on the project. Since we were last in front of you, we did go to Zoning Board of Appeals, um, no. received our special permit for the 42 units as proposed. We've also been to Conservation Commission, had additional, you know, uh, follow up with them. They seem to be in a position uh, to close their hearing once we're done with this process. Uh, no major issues with with them on their on their on their part. Uh, since we were last with you, Graves Engineering issued their peer review. Uh, we have not updated the plans and done a resubmittal as to those comments, but we will. We found them to be uh, pretty minor in nature. Um, a couple of, one of the things I think I want to point out, they, he made reference to the parking spaces behind the garages and made a recommendation that they be 22 feet long just because if they were 18 or 20 feet someone doesn't get close enough to the garage someone might hang out into the sidewalk area so we have you haven't seen it yet but we have revised our plan set to make those 22 feet parking spaces and we've also included a five foot sidewalk in around the entire loop on the site as suggested by the board at the last meeting so those changes and others in accordance with the Graves review, in accordance with the comments that we heard last time about various, you know, pipe sizes and locations and things like that will all be updated and submitted to, to, to the board formally, but we didn't have any issues making any of those, those changes. So I think that was the, the biggest thing, you know, was the you know, the inclusion of that five foot sidewalk, what it means, and Garrett can go over it in more detail if you wish, but what it will mean is we've got to push the envelope out a little bit, so it'll cut into the hill a little bit more, and I can hook you that a lot longer. Oh, I went by it, sorry. Right here. So, you see, Garrett Horsfall, Kelly Engineering Group, so, Essentially, what we've done is we've held the 50-foot conservation um, buffer zone for um, structures and impervious surfaces and built off that. So what that sort of does was we had, you know, instead of 20 feet behind the garage, we went to 22 feet and then a five-foot sidewalk wrapping cir circumferentially um, around the development connecting into a crosswalk um, at the main driveway out to the, um, the, the main driveway into the site. So basically, on you know plan view east here everything sort of shifted over 18 feet once you add in the five and the two and double five and four times two 18 feet everything shifted into the hill essentially um, so we're in the process of you know obviously that's a domino effect to the grading storm water we're in the process of updating those um for the, and the plan said to submit back to the town as well as graves to address um the other comments in the letter as well yeah and just i think Maybe the, the last issue just wanted to raise, raise before we just open it up for conversation. You know, we, we, we talked about, well, there was a comment made at the last meeting about having the road or the, I, I want to call it a driveway, but we'll call it the road for it's now. Time. It, it will be, uh, there was a comment that it should be, it should be uh, designed to subdivision standards of the town of Auburn. 
So we took a look at the subdivision standards and yeah, we'd, we'd first point out that we don't need to comply with subdivision rules and regulations for this road because it's not a subdivision. It's not a, it's not going to be a road that will be asked to be taken over by the town. It will remain perpetually private and part of the condominium association, which will be set up. Uh, but the details on the, the subdivision rules, you know, for a, for a minor road, which this would be, it calls for a pavement width of 24 feet, which we have a pavement width now of 24 feet all the way through the project, through the drive. It calls for a five foot sidewalk, which we now have a five foot sidewalk. We do What we don't have per se are grass strips in between the sidewalk and, and the pavement, but we do have on any given side grass strips between the sidewalk and whatever might be on the interior of the lots. So in, in, in a lot of respects, we do comply. I think if, if I'm looking at this, I look at the pavement width and the sidewalk as maybe the two biggest issues to comply with, and we do comply with those. I just wanted to point that out, even though we don't think we need to comply with those rules, because we're not a subdivision, we're not requesting a subdivision here. We do, we do for the most part, comply with those, those rules. Um, anything else? We heard from the Water District. They have no problem servicing the project. Uh, we have not heard anything else from any other departments. Uh, I'm waiting to hear back from fire. Okay. Well, sure. I will check that Se Sewer Department issued comments, perhaps not through the Planning Board process, but, but through the Zoning Board process, they did. And they had comments regarding the sewer pump. Yeah, we had a follow-up conversation, I believe a couple weeks ago, with Nick Schwartz at the sewer department, just to review his letter. Um, we can, I, we don't see any issues making those changes. The biggest thing was dealing with the, some of the pitches of the sewer, and we just went through what he wants to see on the revised plans and um, just make sure everything that he has concerned that we satisfy. Um, so we did follow up and meet with him and went through his uh, list of items, and you know those will be addressed appropriately. Yeah, they, they actually, they did, it is on the planning board form, Adam, I'm not sure. All right, um, I'll double check to see. And, and it was, it was dated September 26th, and they did provide a number of comments, but as Garrett's saying, you know, we're, we're able to address those. There was a, there was a number of them regarding the, the sewer pump station and just making sure that they had appropriate yeah. details for, for that. <clears throat> so. You know, our project hasn't changed a lot since you last saw it. I think we give you a broad strokes update on what has changed. Happy to answer questions. Do any audience have any questions? Do you have any questions? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, just one thing. I heard you mention during the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting that you were thinking about making the traffic one way in the in the project. Okay, so. We, we were internally um, considering that in order to sort of you know not eat into the hill anymore, but given that we have visitor parking spaces hung off of the drive aisle, you really need 24 feet to have a nine by 18 space. So we, you know, no longer were considering that just because in 24 feet is more consistent, you know, with the subdivision rules we're actually the roadway with. Uh, so that was the main reason why we for forewent the 20 foot width. Okay. Right, everybody. Todd, did you say that the road, all the road is 24 feet? Yes. From I, where you got that line, see where the subdivision kind of the houses kind of end, and yeah. there's a couple of double lines here. <clears throat> all the way out to the road. So the only place is where it tapers into Vinyl Street, where it's only 20 feet. Vinyl Street is only 20 feet today. So that's where we're tying in to Vinyl Street is only 20 feet. So we have to make the transition from 24 to 20. And is that where your gate is that currently? Yeah, is right now? after that, there's a couple houses. If you pull in with the driveway on the right hand side, it, that transition zone will be through there. Okay. Snow storage, are you going to have all <clears throat> this when you do the updated set of prints to us? Yeah, we, there was snow storage called on here. We can, de I know there was confusion with maybe the line type. We can differentiate that a little differently and maybe expand all the snow storage. I know there was concerns about not having adequate snow storage, but we can expand the, the, the clouds that were shown previously. Okay. Trash. 
Certainly. I know you spoke of it the last time we're at the Board of Appeals meeting. I think it might have come up. But it's not going to be in, it's going to be individual people, just like the rest of the town has a collection. Yep, and it'll be through a private, you know, carrier because it won't be won't be a town service. Uh, when you made these driveways 22 instead of 20, so will the trucks, cars, or whatever vehicle it is now stick out onto the sidewalk? No. In two feet, or it'll still have a full five feet of sidewalk clear. C correct, yes. That was Graves' comment. They yes. said at 20 feet, maybe there'll be some that are too long, or if they don't pull close enough to the garage, they'll stick out, but they felt like their recommendation was 22 feet, so that's what we implemented. That, yeah, but you'll still have, they won't be coming into the sidewalk, correct. even correct. at the 22 feet. Correct, so I mean, an average yeah. parking spot is nine by 18, typically, and you know, the, those are some of the new trucks which people have are a little bit longer than that. For now, John, I'm all set. All right. <laughs> all set. So, on the right hand side of your drawing up there, which would be the, to the east side roughly, you're going to cut into that hill? Yes. They're, they're actually, so all the units on that side are you know stepped um, level with the garage to press to the main living levels of foot so we're working with the elevation on the rear side you mean you have a drive under garage yes look at the drainage in terms you do with the water running down the driveway to the garage it's no it's pitched back to the street so it's the three levels in the front oh, okay so by moving those to the east southeast what is the slope going to be on the back of that hill so we're going to maintain um, still a 20-foot bench behind by, behind buildings and we'll work back into the existing slope no greater than three to one. And if we need to, you know, site walls, we will, but we're going to work with the foundation wall to gain 10 feet from basement floor to first floor uh, to work on the grade. What do you mean by you're going to work with the foundation wall? So we're going to gain, you know, the grade does rise. So we're taking advantage. Yeah, like that, right? Yeah, now. we're taking advantage of setting 10 feet higher in, in, in lieu of using site retaining walls or a two to one slope, um, you, you know, taking advantage of a back foundation wall where your basement is coming up 10 feet to your second level and that's your extruded grade on the back side. So you're using the back of the house as a retaining wall? The foundation wall, yeah. yes. But it's still a retaining wall, basically. Yeah. So how do you drain away from the back of the houses? They're pretty close to each other. Are there any catch basins in there to bring it out to your your uh, your own drainage system that goes into the wetland? Yeah, there's area drain network throughout the rear of the houses um, that are pitched away and towards the sides. Uh, so there's area drains that, and then periodically they'll run through, you know, down the slope into the closed drainage system within the site, which connects into the subsurface systems um, throughout the site. So you got to do that to roughly seven, eight houses. The back side with the yeah, right there, yeah. you know, <laughs> go to the corner one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. maybe eight. If you go up around the corner a little bit, you got to raise those foundations up to accommodate the slope in the back, correct? Yes, that's the intent is to have those the interior, the exterior ones around the ring. You save yourself a lot of money by getting rid of two houses, a lot of money. You move the house in the center to the middle of that island, now you got your 24 foot roadway five-foot walkways with grass strips and 22-foot driveways. Only two houses. Four units. Make Which two would move, John? Up there on the, when you drive into the left, like you're going around to the left-hand side, you have the one right there in the, uh, in the V, in the next it's hard, up. It's yeah. hard to see the numbers, but it's 42 and 41. It's right Point it out. Yeah. I think this is what John's talking about there. No, not that one. The next two up. Just keep keep going up. No, no. Just the other side. That I'll just keep going. Two. I mean, I can go for it all yeah. night. Thirty-three and thirty-four. This one and this one. Thirty-three and thirty-two. That allows these houses to move back, which gives you more room for a five-foot walkway. It gives you your twenty-two foot driveways. By moving these back, you have more room to come this way, because those two houses, four units, aren't there. You know, way more than enough room. You may even have a few additional uh, 
empty parking spaces for visitors. And we'll have to review that, you know, uh, certainly, you know, with the, the applicant. To I'm see. just thinking there's a lot of money in concrete there when you're doing that to six, eight houses. I understand. They'll, we'll review that, you know, the financials with them and see if there's yeah, because an opportunity. It won't be a standard foundation on the back of those houses, so it's all to be reinforced or remarked. They're going to be considered a retaining wall, which is, you know, number six is every six inches vertical and horizontal. Military corner is the whole nine yards. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. So the other question I had is where you come out 24 feet and it pinches down to Vinyl Street, you know it's narrow there. Does Vinyl Street ever go back out to 24? I believe it does go by the school. The parking area. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure the exact dimension out towards Vinyl Street, but I believe it is fairly consistent, but it probably does fan out once you I think from their gate coming up towards Vinyl, it's constricted, and then as it gets adjacent to the school parking lot, it starts to widen. It's not that far. That's no. really not that far. I'll have to think about that one. My other concern is the intersection where Vinyl Street hits um, North Oxford Street and Pinehurst Ave. You guys were relying on the on the tip grant. We're not relying on the tip grant. This is what I see happening. You guys rely on the tip grant. That was in the town's hands to take care of that intersection. They don't get the money, and the town's stuck with that traffic problem. That's what I see. So what our traffic engineer recommended as at least a, a, a little bit of a fix, because what we're understanding to be the problem is that at the top of Vinyl Street, those people come to a stop, and then they wait for somebody to either let them out or, you know, wait for you know big enough break in traffic. But that everybody coming down North Oxford Street towards the intersection just keeps coming, and the people can't get out of Vinyl Street. So our, our I'm just going to point because it'll be a little easier. Yep, we passed it. You know, you come to this intersection, you're trying to get here to go left or right, but you can't get in because all these cars are just stacked up here. So the suggestion that our traffic engineer made was put a stop bar and a stop sign here. These people now have to stop. These people can now, you know, get out at least occasionally, whereas now they fight their way out. So that should help to at least keep things moving. There's nothing, you know, there's nothing any of us can do to stop the traffic coming down North Oxford Street, right? It's, it's gonna keep coming. No, but the problem I see is you put the stop sign there at the end of North Oxford, yes. which is the north side of Vinyl Street, you got another stop sign right there where it hits Pinehurst. You do. You're going to get eight feet to get in? Not going to work. It's not, I live over there, Todd. It's a pain in the neck. So the, the idea Either would to be... to get out of that area or to get in that area. Yeah, I mean, the idea would be if somebody's at the stop bar at, at, at the, the main road there, you know, there's, there's one car, maybe two, that are in there before you, you're coming, you're getting your way out from Vinyl Street. So... They got to stop. You know as well. They got to stop. You know as well as I do that as soon as somebody comes around that corner, hits the stop sign where you want to put one, comes around to the next one, the next guy's going to stop and go, stop and go. Nobody's coming up Vinyl Street. All of a sudden, they're coming up Vinyl Street, and it lines all the way past the stop sign. That's common sense. You see that at a traffic light all the time. Go into Webster Square. You're going to go across Webster Square, going over to Harbor Freight from Webster Street, and the car's coming down the other way mm -hmm. toward the fire station, all bang a left, and they block that intersection. That same thing will happen there. I guarantee it. Unless you want to go out there and direct traffic. Something's got to be done about that intersection before we put 42 units or 40 units or whatever number of units we're putting in. How many cars would you say, Todd? How many do you say are projected to enter and leave that each day? Well, as you know, the traffic engineers use the ITE manual and they go in and they plug it in and it says 42 units equals X trips. We can sit here and argue about whether that's an accurate What did they say? But it, that's what they use. So this well, what is, was the number? Yeah, so, the, so the, up on the screen here, this is Chappelle Engineering Associates you know, data. They say on a weekly day, weekday daily basis, it's 270 trips. They break it down into a.m. peak hour and, and, and weekday p.m. peak hour. And for the a.m. peak, they say four cars entering the site. 
12 cars exiting the site during that peak hour, which is you know, one car every five minutes. So only 12 cars are going to leave in the morning? Even the, if you add them all up. This is this is 32 cars. This is traffic engineering. I don't care what traffic engineering I, says. I understand. I know what my eye says. I understand, but this is. And I see cars this is, lined up coming out of the This is how these things are are put together. The vinyl street. This is the information up. that gets plugged in. And these are Doesn't these are work. the standards that that we all live with. But they're saying weekday daily total is 270 trips. Yeah, which is probably around four trips, four and a half, five trips per unit per day. But then those numbers, I don't, I don't get. So that. the. The, the method, you know, the, the, the thing that they would tell you is, you know, especially now, you know, if you have 42 units over there, how many of those people leave at the same exact time to go to work every day, right? It, there's going to be a chunk of people that leave in the morning at 6 o'clock, right? There's going to be a bunch of people that leave at 6.30, 7 o'clock, and so on. School kids get dropped off, you know, there's, there's different times. So the AM rush is really spread out over over a few hours. Excuse this me, is the, this John. Is the can I ask him another? Absolutely. Yeah. It's now. Does that count include Nancy Drive, Vinyl Street, and the school? No. That no. does. It's only for your project. This is what our project produces as additional traffic to the area. And do you have? Did anybody propose, Adam, or anybody, this design of this intersection? five, six, seven years from now that the state well, said they're going to do it? We should happen. Totally. We've had some it discussions with um, a consultant and um, CMRPC who manages the, the funding. But they don't, there's no specific design on a piece no, of paper? No, would no it worries out from any design. <clears throat> The other thing, when you said it's going to be a private HOA and all that stuff, mm -hmm. that's great. Now, when they're done selling the places, they're gone. These people own it with an HOA. It's already happened here once. This town will be built as town standards because I know down the road they're going to come before the town and say, will the town take this over? But you, you just say no. I mean, that happens everywhere. I've, I've, I've honestly seen that play out in every community. People go in and... You know, I had my, my great uncle just asked me to do it in Shrewsbury, and I said, you can't. It's a condo association. The town's never going to take over the road. It's an easy conversation with Adam. 30 seconds. It's a private road. It's never going to be a town. Well, I don't think it's his decision, but I think it's private. I'm just saying, he, he, that's an easy conversation. Give him my phone number. I'll talk to him. We've had people, they, they, we've had they don't people have, waste our time it, a few meetings long. Tom. I understand that, them. but that's, that's not... They're gone. That, they're gone. They don't give... I don't. I don't disagree, but yeah. but that that's the structure of the project is a is a private condominium association that is going to be managed internally. They're responsible for snowplow, landscape, insurance on the on the buildings. You know, they're they're responsible for everything under the sun. I mean, they wrap it into a condo fee. Everybody pays their condo fees. Oh, so it's, nobody has to pay homeowners insurance. Because it's taken care of by the HOA. That's a that's a, that's, a, that's a falsehood. I'm not sure. Condo, I'm not sure. Insurance. I'm not so, sure how they set them up now. Not a telltale. But historically, condos and at least in bigger buildings, they 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 insure the building and they pass on a piece of it as insurance to the. To the yeah, but it's an apartment building. I, mean, I don't know what insurance. they do with duplexes. I'm not sure. I'm not trying to speak to that. I'm just saying that these things are privately managed and privately run. The other comment you made in the last meeting is if we didn't allow this, you could put in 54 homes? No. What I said was we, if we tried to maximize the site mm -hmm. per the square footage and acreage on the mm -hmm. site, we could go up to 50, I don't know the number, 54 or 56. I think it was 54 or 52. Yes. So you um, wouldn't have the frontage for each house to make, to make the town? We don't, we don't need it. You wouldn't have the frontage? You would. If you did individual homes? If we instead did, of a con instead of if this, we did individual homes. I you have to have the frontage, and you wouldn't have the frontage for 52 homes. The only way to get those 52 homes in is to have sliver lots, and half the land goes out into the wetlands on the on the west side. Yeah, we weren't we weren't talking about single family homes. And that frontage uh, formula the front. doesn't meet. No, it wouldn't meet. So the 52 units that that was just a tail. 
So obviously we can't vote tonight because I haven't seen the revised plans. Yep. My next question was, where's the pump station going? Is that going off the paved service? Well, the hatch will be, and then the tanks, portions of the tanks may be um, underneath our paved service, but the hatch component um, will be in in the lawn surface, you know, for the previous comment at that last meeting. Yeah, because it will get torn up. Guaranteed. Agreed. Thank you for the comment. Yep. And Todd, this, it does mimic in the, in the old days what we call the cluster housing. Mm -hmm. So I, I just, I never, I don't recall in all my years on the board, anyone that, anything that's ever come in like this, where you've got, you know, all of those houses that close and using the driveway, because they used to have to come in, they had to show the usable land, uh, the, 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 the common land, uh, so many houses, they were reduced to 50 feet of frontage maybe instead of 100, because I think that's 100 feet of frontage in that area down on Nancy. Or is it 20? I understand a lot, yeah. Is it 10,000 square feet or 100, uh, 20? 10,000. Do the school buses get on Nancy Drive to pick up the kids? I don't believe so, but I could find out. That would be another, that'd be another nightmare for traffic, trying to get them to school. Even if they go down to uh There's a cul de sac at the end, the little one, but oh, it's not big enough for school yeah, buses. No. There is. Uh, I thought there was. It's not big enough for school buses. No, maybe not. No. But I mean they if they did, they'd probably get on an ANC drive and then pick up the kids, turn around where Julie Bancroft is and then come out. But if you add that bus traffic for those kids to get out and there's a traffic jam out there at the main intersection, then they're gonna get to school on time. That's another problem. I mean, that's not our problem, that's your guys' problem. The way I say it. So, I mean, uh, something you should find out is where the school buses go, how many buses, how many times a day. Because if there's special needs, sometimes the special needs get out a half a day. If the kindergarten, sometimes the kindergarten kids take a half a day and they get picked up and they get brought back the other half of the day. All kinds of things. It's going to add to the traffic problem down that intersection. You can't even get out Old Street anymore because everybody used the cut through for uh, North Oxford coming down to Pinehurst. When that backs up, they shoot out of Oldris and Oldris backs up to the top of the hill. You can't get out either way. I don't know where all that traffic's coming from. It's coming from Worcester. People coming home. It's not coming from this site. No, but that's not going to make it any better. It's only going to make it worse. So we're happy to revise the plans, respond to Graves. Um, I think that's the, that's the plan would be to do that in the next you know week or ten days. I don't know when your next meeting is, but soon we'd be ready for that. On December tenth. December tenth. December tenth. Okay, so we respectful of the request to continue it to December 10th for meeting. I have a motion to, uh, move to continue. continue. This, move this, continue this to 1210 meeting. I have a second. Second it. All those in favor, Glenn? Aye. Ron? Aye. 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 Thank you. Now, the other people coming? I thought so. I think they're out there. They might, they could be out there. Okay. Yeah, they're coming out here. Yeah, they're coming out here. Next on the agenda is applicant CEMS LLC care of Henry Reisenkopf requesting a special permit and site plan approval under section 3.2.5.3 of the Auburn Zoning Bylaw for a coffee shop and other site improvements at 602 Southwood Street, Auburn Mass, Map 56, parcel 148, continued from our September 24th meeting. Is there anyone here rep representing CMS? So I thought there would be an attendance, but I'll just give you an update. Um, VHB, uh, they got the applicant got their traffic response back to VHB. Hey, Rich. 
Um, they done? Are they done? They're done. They rambled on, and they're done. I know. It's a strange oh, yeah. visit. It's so, BH, BHP is working on the second review. BHP just got additional funds to complete the second review. So, that's still, that work's still happening. So, I expect to have the, the traffic report and the VHB review to you for the next week. Uh, so, you know, there's no one in attendance. May have a motion to continue this to our December 10th meeting. I'll make that motion. May have second. a second. All in favor, Glenn? Aye. Ron? Aye. Jason? Aye. I saw during the night, it is a vote. Uh, next on the agenda, it was the decision 27 Mid State Drive. We've all signed that. Uh, meeting minutes. A second here. Can I have a motion to approve the meeting minutes as submitted for 9 24 2024? I move to approve the minute uh, submitted for 9 24 2024. May have a second. Second. All those in favor? One. Aye. Ron? Aye. Aye. So, attorneys and ayes are both. Uh, the next meeting. I did make a correction on the next meeting. One small thing. It was just that you said I said to put in two and a half to three inches of stone. It was to use 2.5 inch or 3 inch stone, the size of the stone. So I'll give this to you so you can see where I make the correction. Can I have a motion to approve uh, I move the to October 8th meeting minutes as amended? I move to approve the October meeting, uh, October 8th minutes as amended. I have a second. Second. All those in favor, Glenn? Aye. Ron? Aye. Jason? Aye. Myself, John Reed, and I as a vote. And lastly, uh, meeting minutes for our October 22nd meeting. May I have a motion to approve as I'll make a motion to approve the mean minutes of the meeting of October 22nd, 2024. May I have a second? I'll second it. All those in favor, Glenn? Aye. Ron? Aye. Jason? Aye. Myself, John Regan, I, is an aye. Um, any, uh, no, no one for received business by me. Any town member, or town planner update? Um. No. Uh, may I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Move to adjourn the meeting. May I have second. a second? All those in favor, Glenn? Aye. Ron? Aye. Jason? Aye. Myself, John Regan? Aye. It's a vote. Meeting is now adjourned.